Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jorge. Jorge Beno. Uh, I've been uh, studying Python for a couple of years now. I'm looking to make a transition out of my current field, and definitely computers is an interest of mine. Um, I was an MCSC way back in 2002 on Windows 2000. Not a whole lot of servers available that run Windows 2000 nowadays, so that kind of is obsolete, but software development has definitely been an interest of mine. And giving talks is another interest of mine. So this is my third one currently from San Diego Python Meetup Group, and I'm happy to be here. So high end, virtual environments for lazy people. Now, I mean lazy in the sense of conserving effort, not in the sense of unmotivated. Because virtual environments definitely are a good thing if you are working with multiple projects with different versions of the same package. If uh, you don't know about virtual environments, you will do a lot of crying and uninstalling and reinstalling. And this is meant to, one of the tools that's meant to solve that particular problem. So what is the problem with virtual environments? Currently in Python, managing dependencies, packages that you need to install to work, you need to have two different tools. PIP to install packages and something like virtual and for BEMF uh, for Python 3.4 and newer to actually manage the virtual environment part. That can be super complicated to explain to people that are just studying Python for the first time. We want to lower barriers into our language. We want to bring more people into our fold to discover this wonderful thing called Python. So whatever complexity we can do to remove as developers is a good thing. So what if we had PIP and virtual app as one tool? to the point where virtual environments were kind of transparent. That'd be kind of awesome, right? Guess what? Somebody did just that. And that's what PIP then fits. All right, so let's start. Blank directory, I just have a simple requirements file that lists my dependencies. Nothing on my sleeves, right? No magic here. That's all that's in the requirements file. I want C's and Django, that's it. Normally, I would have to create a virtual environment and get PIP to install those and a whole bunch of other stuff. I don't need to do any of that. PIPF makes it easy. PIPF install and then watch it work. It creates a virtual environment for me because it sees one isn't there. It installs the dependencies for me. And then at the very end, it says to activate the virtual environment, run the following, PIP and shell. That's all there is to it. Super, super, super easy. So if we type the bin shell, I don't have to worry about modif modifying my bash RC file. I don't have to download a second package so that I can abstract the first package. It'll create the virtual environment for me. And like most virtual environment managers, you'll see that the name of the virtual environment is prepended to the prompt. That's how you know you're in a virtual environment instead of in your system Python. Right. And so how can we test to make sure that we're in our, we have those packages installed? There they are. There they are. So, but how do we tell what installed what? Right? I, I only asked for two things and I got all this. So where did those other packages come from? PipMF has another tool called PipMCraft that will kind of organize your dependencies for you so you see what installed what and what the requirements were. If you've ever had an issue with a conflict between dependencies, you will know how useful this thing can be. Now there's a lot of other things that PipMF can do. I suggest that you read the documentation on read the docs. Um, it's also uh, listed as a resource in the Python Packaging Authority as of a couple of months ago, I believe. And so now I've been using this for all the projects that I've been working on. It works with Travis, it can use continuous integration. It works with uh, DigitalOcean, where I currently deploy my test websites. So I can vouch that it's a, a useful tool that can be used in production. Any questions? We'll start doing that. Can you specify module versions in the requirements file? Yes, you can. You can certainly pin dependencies. And it creates what's called a pip file for you, and you can pin those dependency versions mm -hmm. there as well. 
It does a lot more than that, guys. I'm telling you, this is just the very bare, high earth overview. And yes. No, it's pip install pip -imp. Now, if for those operating systems that, that have a system uh, Python, in other words, everything except Windows, you should install it as the user you're currently on so that you don't break your system Python. So pip install hyphen u pip -imp. For Windows, since Windows almost never ships with Python installed, you won't care. So you have Python 2.7. All at the same time and well. Yes. Um, so does it work kind of like a container, or I guess how is everything encapsulated in FNet outside of the OS? Um, it kind of plays with environment variables so that it points to different things that you have installed. The files are sitting there, but it just says that for this virtual environment, this is the system Python. It basically lies to the OS, okay. which is kind of cool. It's a lot of black magic. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, guys, I appreciate your time. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. You, need, you need me to clear anything? No. Please, Are you going to do your own laptop? Um, I would prefer that, yeah. Okay. I will unplug. <laughs> <laughs>